India Today has been able to access, let me show you, uh, the full report of uh, the Modi government. This is the full report which compiles all the information available with all our investigative agencies on Zakir Naik. This report talks about and nails Zakir Naik's links with the ISIS. 24 of the converts, 24 of those who came to Zakir Naik's factories went on to join the ISIS in Afghanistan. India Today exclusive is our top focus on the newsroom tonight. He is infamous as an Islamic televangelist, hate preacher and a fugitive in hiding. Tonight, India Today nails Zakir Naik's link to the world's most feared terror organization, the ISIS. Exclusive documents on India Today reveal how Zakir and his henchmen converted gullible youth and set them on the path to jihad in Kabul. You know, we spent the whole day going through the Zakir Naik investigation report. Remember, this is the combined effort of the NIA, all the various police stations, uh, and the various state police forces that have been looking at the Zakir Naik case files. And what is emerging is disturbing. The Ministry of Home Affairs now has reason to believe that Zakir Naik and his closest associates deliberately and consciously brought youngsters to their conversion factories where people were indoctrinated. 24 of the people who came to the IRF office in Dongri in Mumbai went on to join the ISIS in Afghanistan. Sit back and watch as Kamaljeet Sandhu, who tracks internal security for us, brings you this India Today exclusive on the Zakir Nayak ISIS link. Here it is. If he's terrorizing the terrorist, if he's terrorizing America, the terrorist, biggest terrorist, I'm with him. Every Muslim should be a terrorist. The thing is that if he's terrorizing a terrorist, he's following Islam. An insidious terror evangelist who exploded into India's conscience last year. A man now infamous for sowing the seeds of violent fundamentalism in the minds of millions across the subcontinent. A man so terrified of the backlash that he hasn't returned to India in months, sitting in a safe haven abroad, continuing his work. But while investigative agencies search for Zakir Nayak, India Today brings you the deadliest, most shattering proof of this man's real work. No hearsay, no rumors. What you've heard is nothing compared to this. The cold hard truth of a truly dangerous brainwasher. Documents accessed prove that Zakir Nayak hasn't just dominated the airwaves to spread hate, but in fact has actively been converting impressionable youth to Islam and sending them straight into the world's most dreaded terror organization, the ISIS. This 100-page dossier from the Unlawful Activities Prevention Tribunal, revealed for the first time on national television before you, exposes two of Zakir Naik's trusted lieutenants from the Islamic Research Foundation. Rizwan Khan and Arshi Qureshi converted four Kerala youth to Islam. The youth, Bestin Vincent alias Yahya, Merin Jacob alias Mariam, Bexin Vincent alias Isa, and Nimisha alias Fatima were radicalized at the IRF office in Dongri in Mumbai. The National Investigation Agency states that 24 youth migrated from Kerala to Kabul to join the ISIS. Zakir Nayak and his cronies steered them towards fundamentalism, catching them young, stripping their identities, molding them into jihadis and steering their journey to Afghanistan. For his brainwashing of 19 youth from Kerala, Zakir Naik's aide Arshi Qureshi was paid handsomely, about 43.75 lakh in four years, the price for peddling radicalism. Exclusive documents accessed by India Today clearly show that conversion is only a camouflage for Zakir Naik, that money 
by FCRA was pumped into Arshi Qureshi Ki Zakir Naik aid for conversion of North Muslims to Islam and then pushing the youth to ISIS. That cover has now been blown off. I challenge anyone to point out any statement. Zakir Naik pulled out the victim guard last year when the investigative agencies were on his trail. While he denounced the ISIS in public, behind the scenes, he was converting and radicalizing youth in his own foundation. When an organization comes and says that we are an Islamic state and they're killing innocent people, this name Islamic state is given by the enemies of Islam. Don't report on your media that Islamic state has done that, it's totally wrong. I call them anti-Islamic state of Iraq and Syria. As India Today digs deeper, it is finally clear why Zakir Naik is sitting cowering abroad instead of returning to his country. His direct role in radicalizing youth for ISIS, his role in the larger infrastructure that ISIS employs and his guilt writ large. A con man in the garb of a religious preacher, a fundamentalist posing as a pacifist, India Today's report blows the lid once and for all of Zakir Naik's facade of crying witch hunt. With Kamaljeet Sandhu in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Joining us to talk about this Big India Today exclusive, I've got uh, Umar Sharif, President of the Discover Islam Educational Trust. Uh, Sambit Patra is the National Spokesperson of the BJP. Kamaljeet Sandhu is just joining us. Uh, she's the one who's been able to scoop this report of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Tribunal of uh, the Government of India, which details the kind of investigation that's been done. And it's very interesting, Kamaljeet, uh, that this report says that there were 24 ISIS recruits who came frequently to the Dongri office of the IRF, interacted with Zakir Naik's closest associates and are now with the ISIS in Afghanistan. Well, absolutely. It's actually shocking. And the fact is, these are ISIS recruits. These are people from Kerala. They've been converted to Islam. That means if there was a certain camouflage which was done, that they're doing a job, they're converting people to Islam, but that's not it. They're converting these people to terror factories and they are pushing them to go to either ISIS or to Afghanistan, which is the case. In fact, one of them, Nimisha, who converted to being an Islamic uh, Fatima, she was four months pregnant, Rahul, when she went to Afghanistan, she delivered a baby there. The fact is that this is the sense of radicalization that we get. Then Qureshi is there, then uh, there is Rizwan Khan, who are close aides of Zakir Naik. They're actively involved in conversion, and IRF hub in Dongri itself was used as a hub to convert people and then push them towards ISIS. Okay, I want to understand what Umar Sharif, president of the Discover Islam Educational Trust, has to say. Here, this report by... Uh, the government of India, which really looks at the investigation and very comprehensive investigation done by all investigative agencies, suggests that Zakir Naik and the youngsters who came there were indoctrinated and 24 of them at least, there are 24 names, addresses that have been cited, 24 of these youngsters went on to join the ISIS in Afghanistan. Okay, that's... Uh... Uh, that's an allegation that you've made at the moment. There is a court of law which has to go through the process of law, and only then we can come to know what the reality of what the research is. First and foremost, I would like to ask this question. Why is that these 24 members had to go all the way to Syria or to Afghanistan if they want to do something in the cause of Islam? I mean to say, it is totally uncanny for anybody who is embracing Islam and to get indoctrinated to the extent that he has to fly all the way to Syria or all the way to Afghanistan, I don't see that happening according to the human mind that you can think of. Nobody would just think of just becoming a Muslim and going and dying somewhere in the foreign state. That is totally uncanny. Okay, and one second, one second, one second. second RSN Singh is a yeah, very well-known counter-terror expert. He's see. listening to what you're saying. Umar Shari, one moment. RSN Singh, Umar Sharif says... Why would somebody make the effort of going to Syria and Afghanistan if he has to spread terror, he'd do it here. He says, it's <laughs> tough to believe that somebody would first get converted to Islam, then go to Syria, Afghanistan. He makes it seem as if the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Modi government is just cooking up these investigation reports. Absolutely, yes. Okay, one yes. second. I've heard you. Let's I'm hear from say, RSN. Uh, one, I one, would one, say yes. Uh, one up minute, story, one yes. minute. 
the, uh, no, no, no. This, 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 this gentleman then is, you know, deliberately ignoring or he doesn't uh, have any idea of the Islamic State. But I think the former is uh, true. He is deliberately ignoring. If people are going from all over Europe, if people are going, you know, 200 Maldivians, you know, I, uh, you know, it's an island, uh, island country. I mean, uh, making their way to Islamic State in Syria. I mean, uh, people going from Kashmir, you know, from Kashmir to Australia, as a student I'm talking about, and then also from Australia to, to, uh, uh, to Syria. And there is, there is a, uh, kindly do read the uh, interview of Abdul Rashid Abdullah. He's there. He is their handler. He's, oh, absolutely. He's and India we ran the tapes here on India uh, Today. Sambit uh, Patra, how, 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 how do you respond those, to Umar those, Sharif? Those he makes it seem as if this is somehow a Modi government witch hunt against Zakir Nayak against whom nothing has been proven. Absolutely. He's not adding and he's not believing absolutely. in the credibility of the unlawful hunt. activities prevention tribunal report that Kamaljeet has scooped. Dr. Patra. No, first and foremost, he does not even need an answer because everyone knows what the truth is and Mr. Arasan Singh rightly pointed out that uh, it, it would be ki quite naive to say that he does not know of ISIS. The biggest issue over here is I have, I have the uh, newspaper report of one Ibn Jacob who was 25 year old man. He is a Christian of Kerala. He is the brother of Merlin. You were right now pointing out Merlin alias Mariam who was converted by this guy, Jakir Naik, who is missing along with her husband, Bestian Vinshet, that is Yahya, from Kerala. And this guy, Eben Jacob, who is a 24-year-old guy, in one of his interrogations to the Mumbai police, had categorically stated that he, along with his brother's family, were being indoctrinated by Jakir Naik, and he did not fall in the trap, while the rest of the members of the family fell in the trap, and the person, the conduit, who was responsible for this kind of indoctrination was one Archie Kuresi, who was a member of IRF. And right now in your report also, you have pointed out that this guy, R.C. Kuresi, received approximately 43 lakh rupees in a duration of time period. And you know that Mr. R.C. Kuresi is behind bars since 2016. Now, it is not just India which has been saying this. Remember, after the Dhaka Cafe blast, Nabris Islam and Rohan Imtiaz, two of the six terrorists who were responsible for this blast, had agreed to the, I mean, uh, the history was dug out, and it was found that they were indoctrinated by Jakir Naik's speeches. And then we had the 2006 Mumbai train blasts also. Rahil Sheikh, Firoz Ghasawala, and Irfan Deshmukh, all were the people so who had seems as if Umar that Sharif, that you are living in denial. Take for it example, is not just ISIS. absolutely, so take for example also. the terrorists from Bangladesh. They, inspire, they claim that they were inspired by Zakir Naik. There is enough documentary evidence, including Kamaljeet, some testimonies here from the father of those who joined the ISIS, where Literally. they're talking about how Zakir Naik indoctrinated. Omar, listen to Kamalji. She's read this report before you respond. So you've got anguished parents speaking out. Well, uh, one of the facts is, Rahul, that let each let of the uh, ISIS terror recruits, and there have been investigating agency which has panned out towards India, and they have dug out, in, uh, and there are statements of ISIS recruits who have said, whether it is, uh, we're talking about Arif Majid, one of the first ISIS recruits from Kalyan, uh, then we're talking about Mohammed Ibrahim, from the Hyderabad module, we're talking about Abu Anas from the Rajasthan module. All of them have said they've been deeply inspired by Zakir Nayak. The other part is about the anguish of the parents. Now, many of the documents that we have accessed clearly say that uh, they are conver converting to Islam, uh, which is voluntary. Uh, but the parents are crying foul, saying uh, that they were going to IRF very frequently. That's where the radicalization That's where took the place. radicalization happened, Umar Sharif. Now, this is being said by the parents. We've got the affidavits here. There's a sworn affidavits admissible as evidence in a court against Zakir Naik. They're saying on record that they were, their children were radicalized by Zakir Naik and the kind of speeches he made. See, you have uh, mentioned uh, the news that had come in the Bangladesh news media. You must also complete the news by saying that the day star retract their words by saying that they have no evidence to say that Dr. Zaki Naik influenced those terrorists. First and foremost, the immediate report that had come in the day star was a mistake. And they also acknowledged and they had apologized for what they had printed. What do you, have, you have to say to about the parents? About the parents of these see, children who are on a sworn affidavit talking about how listen, their wards were okay, influenced and radicalized because they continued to go to the Islamic Research Foundation run by Zakir Naik. 
See, the person who was arrested earlier, Rizwan, the person who was arrested, he's come out now and he's going to be clean in some days. Look, the allegation is totally false because the person who has been giving talks for nearly two and a half decades is well known to the people across India and he has been often quoting the verse from chapter number 5, verse number 32, saying that whosoever kills one innocent, it is like killing the entire humanity. This was his regular verse that he was always quoting. And moreover, he has denounced ISIS even earlier many a time saying that Patra respond to this non-Islamic state that in his speeches and in the interview state, he, he gave Javed Ansari considered. Zakir yeah. Naik says I don't like he the ISIS the ISIS are the he, worst thing that have happened he says that's what he's saying now you think that's an afterthought how do you respond to Umar? He, he used to say even no, before no. the Dhaka incident he said that Dr. Patra, Patra. Patra. Dhaka Zakir Dhaka Naik is concerned as far as Zakir we Naik is concerned can the scholar be quiet for a Dr. while Patra. can he hear to me can, can he listen to me? Thank you. No, number one, as far as Jakir Naik is concerned, he, he, he was a very wise rat, I'll tell you. I mean, he knew how to play with words. But let me tell you, there are certain sections of what he spoke which have been in record. You played out a section of it. Let me read it out. Let the scholar present in this channel if defend he's a Mr. White Jakir Naik then you are after black right, what sir. he has said. If he's a white I quote, sir, 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 don't, 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 don't. He's a, he's a terror sponsor, so please. Number one. If bin Laden is fighting enemies of Islam, I am for him. If he is terrorizing America, the terrorist, biggest terrorist, I am with him. Categorically, clearly and without mincing any words, he says that, well, yes, if someone is fighting America by terror means, he was with those people. So he has not minced any words. Second statement, every Muslim should be a terrorist. Third, February 2012. Naik implored the Muslims to fight for Islam and disobey the law of the land if it goes against the law of the creator, that is Islam. Saying Vande Matram is not desirable for Muslim. He stands for suicide bombing. Remember when he came out with his own defense from the foreign destination through a Skype or a camera chat? What did he say? He said that suicide should okay, not Omar be done for personal but reasons. But as a strategy, there is Doctor no problem videos. with suicide bombing. As a strategy, there is no problem. He's the aid who's handling. No, you're calling Look, these doctored videos, but that's doctored not true because this report says, the tribunal see, report says the that the talk. videos have not we been have found to be doctored, uh, Kamalji. The report the says the, the videos US are not doctored. Plus, you're making a good talk. point about how money went into Arshi's account and Arshi is currently in jail. Absolutely, Why was he was arrested by the to Kerala him? police. Uh, the money trail clearly says that IRF funded money. They put money uh, to the tune of 43.75 lakh rupees into his account. This was basically to do conversion. Rizwan, was made, uh, who was also a close aide of Zakir Naik, had the same level of allegations made against him, and that is why he was arrested. He was not only doing conversion. Remember, those two couples who actually were Christians and then converted to Islam and went to Afghanistan, uh, the, guardian, the guardian who signed on uh, court papers and documents there was himself Rizwan. Omar so Sharif respond. Involved. See, thousands of people have embraced Islam after watching Dr. Zaki Naik's talk. And Dr. Zaki Naik is not a person who goes and talks to people in their homes or meets them in marketplaces. His talks are ready for anybody to go and hear to. And from past two and a half decades, his talks were available for everybody. And one fine day, you come and say, like, he is promoting terrorism. It's totally uncanny. Nobody can buy this. You see, RSN the people saying who had if somebody watches the Muslims, Zakir Naik you know, tape and then becomes a radicalized ISIS Zakir terrorist, Naik, Umar Sharif says, support. don't blame Zakir Naik. Does that hold any but merit at all? Man. Does that argument hold any merit, RSN? So, can, I, can I ask a question to Umar Sharif? No, the viewers. Yeah, ask him, ask this man to keep quiet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, what I'm saying is that, you know, his, his tapes are a matter of public domain. People have, uh, you know, heard it n number of times. There is absolutely no spiritual content. There is no message of inclusivity. It is only a message of hatred. You, you, you hear uh, any of the tapes. There is no mes message about nation building. Does does Omar uh, this fellow does he uh, uh, does he not believe in caliphate? Does he not believe in Ummah? Does he not believe as as this gentleman doesn't uh, does he not uh, uh, believe in Sharia? This is what he was he was he was uh, preaching. The second thing it was totally unabashed radicalization. And here was a man you know who who 
who purposely sported a hybrid, you know, hybrid, uh, hi no, no, hybrid, you know, hybrid uh, uh, dressing up, you know, uh, you know, Western clothes tie and with that is Islamic cap because he was catering to uh, a particular, you know, co educated constituency. Patra people, has a know, question for Masharif. Sambit, go ahead. Media, media savvy and social uh, uh, side. Rahul. So, Rahul, Rahul, to this person called as Umar Sheikh, Rahul, you must have forgotten something, you might have forgotten something, but I remember because I had made notes that day when India Today gave out an exclusive news break. And the exclusive news break is what is my question to Umar Sharif. The break was that the Jamatud Dawa site had a mention of Jakir Naik's IRF as a resource for religious learning. So Hafiz site was full of praise of Jakir Naik and his IRF. And India Today has shown the website of JUD as to how the JUD carried the IRF as one of the important sources of religious learning. Sharif, so respond. A terror body like JUD sponsoring respond and supporting, Umar supporting a person and his organization. Let me, let me, let me like respond Jakir to this. Naif. Now Mr. Me. Umar Sharif should say, let me respond what does to he this. feel about JUD? Look, 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 look. Dr. Zakir Naik is not appreciated by, not just by any one section of the community. The people watch Dr. Zaki Naik for a reason oh, that he is able to quote versus verbatim. He is able to quote versus verbatim. That is the real reason why people want to watch Dr. Zaki Naik. That is the reason why Sri Sri Ravi Shankar himself, he oh, That was the reason as to why Hafiz Saeed was events. eulogizing Zaki Naik. Dr. Oh, that Z was the reason as to why Sri Sri Ravi Shankar was Zaki eulogizing Naik IRF. Shri Shri Ravi Shankar was eulogizing Dr. Zakir Naik. No, Zaki no, no, Naik, sir. You know very well. Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. Terrorists and terror sites were eulogizing Zakir Naik, Naik for obvious reasons. For obvious Shri reasons. Shri Ravi Shankar was eulogizing. What do you very want to quickly, say? So, so what? What do you want to say about Shri Shri so Ravi what? Shankar? So, 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 so what? No, so he what? was not eulogizing. Many of them. Many no, of them no, no, no. He was not eulogizing Zakir Naik. That was an unfortunate debate, I would say. Dr. That was an unfortunate Zaki debate, I would say. He was not, he would never he, eulogize Jakir Naik. But, 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 do you know I am? Do you know I am Sultan? Do you know I am Sultan? He is the IS, he IS. Okay, one second. I don't want this debate. He 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 let's out stay focused on the facts. Media. We've he got this tribunal like report out now. What happens next? Zakir Naik is in Malaysia this time? Is he still in Malaysia? Sources tell us that. Saudi Arabia or Malaysia? See, uh, the last uh, known location is supposed to be Malaysia. Okay, though he so he's trying to revoke his passport. Has that happened yet or is it in the works? It's in the process. It's By when does that happen? It's going to happen shortly and we've been told once that is done, then they will move a process of extradition. But remember, it's going to be extremely difficult uh, because where he's seeking asylum of sorts, where he's seeking citizenship, are uh, all countries which seem to be backing him, whether it's Saudi Arabia, whether it's Malaysia. So this is going to be extremely tricky and even for India is concerned. Kamaljeet has access tonight will be the basis for India's demand for extradition. Good work, Kamaljeet. Thank you so much for joining us on the newsroom.